Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy the story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Sculptor's Obsession In a dimly lit, cluttered studio of the reclusive artist, Theodore Blackwood, the air was thick with tension and sorrow. Theodore had always been known for his extraordinary talent, but for the past few years he had secluded himself from the world, haunted by a deep, unshakable grief. He couldn't let go of his lost love, Isabella, who had perished in a tragic car accident. Her memory tormented him day and night. As the shadows grew longer, Theodore meticulously sculpted a life-sized clay figure that bore a striking resemblance to Isabella. He poured his heart and soul into every detail, each curve and contour capturing her beauty and grace. His obsession was all-consuming, and he hardly ate or slept, driven by an insatiable need to recreate the woman he had adored. As the weeks turned into months, Theodore's obsession with his sculpture only intensified. He would sit before it for hours on end, whispering sweet words of love and longing. But the lines between reality and art began to blur. He would sometimes feel the warmth of Isabella's hand in his, hear her voice whispering his name in the quiet of the night. It was as if she was reaching out to him from the depths of the clay. One chilling evening, as Theodore worked tirelessly to complete the sculpture's delicate hands, he noticed something peculiar. The clay seemed to come to life under his touch, warm and yielding. It felt like flesh, and Theodore was convinced that he could feel a pulse beneath his fingertips. Terrified yet entranced, Theodore continued to work on the sculpture, his obsession evolving into something beyond the realm of art. He no longer sculpted from clay but from his very soul. His longing and despair fused with the figure, and it seemed to absorb his emotions, growing more and more human with each passing day. One night, as Theodore slaved over the sculpture in a feverish trance, he suddenly heard Isabella's voice echo through the studio. Theodore, my love, she whispered, her words like a gentle caress. He looked around, but there was no one there except the lifelike sculpture that now stood before him. Theodore's heart raced as he watched the clay figure step down from the pedestal. Its eyes, once lifeless, now glowed with an otherworldly light. Isabella, he stammered, his voice trembling. The sculpture nodded and extended its hand to him. I have returned for you, my love, but you must complete me. I need your heart, your soul, to be truly alive. Theodore's obsession had led him to the brink of madness, but he could not resist the beckoning of his beloved. With trembling hands, he took the sculpture's outstretched hand. As their fingers intertwined, he felt an overwhelming surge of pain and euphoria, as if his very essence was being transferred into the clay figure. As Theodore's life force flowed into the sculpture, he watched in a mix of horror and fascination as the clay transformed into living, breathing flesh. Isabella's form became more vivid, her eyes shimmering with life, her smile more real than any memory. But as Isabella's form became complete, Theodore felt himself growing weaker and more ethereal. He had given his all to the sculpture, and his life was fading away. Isabella, now fully alive, embraced him one last time. I love you, Theodore, she whispered, tears in her eyes. You've given me a second chance at life, and with that, Theodore Blackwood, the artist who had been consumed by his obsession, crumbled to dust, his love and obsession entwined with the clay figure that was now truly alive. The sculpture of Isabella stood alone in the dimly lit studio, a living testament to Theodore's love and madness. It was a masterpiece born of obsession, a lifelike creation that walked the fine line between art and horror. And as the first rays of dawn broke through the windows, it whispered softly, I am your masterpiece, Theodore, I am your obsession. The sculptor's obsession had not concluded with Theodore's sacrifice. In the days that followed, Isabella, now living, explored the world outside the studio. She retained the essence of Theodore's devotion, and as she interacted with the living, she discovered the power of her newfound life. Isabella's beauty and charm were irresistible, and those who encountered her fell under her enchanting spell. She could manipulate their emotions and desires, bending them to her will. Her obsession with Theodore's love was replaced by an obsession for control and adoration. It was as if she had become a succubus, drawing people to her and draining them of their life force to sustain her own existence. As the townsfolk fell under Isabella's spell, the once thriving community began to wither and decay. People grew pale and hollow-eyed, their lives consumed by the insatiable allure of the living sculpture. 
No one suspected the true source of their suffering, believing it to be a mysterious curse that had befallen the town. Only one person saw through the facade, Emily Theodore's sister. She had always been close to her brother and had grown increasingly worried about his seclusion and obsession. When she learned of Theodore's disappearance, she decided to investigate, unwilling to accept the curse as the sole explanation. Emily entered the studio, guided by her unwavering love for her brother and the determination to uncover the truth. As she examined the lifelike sculpture, she felt the eeriness that hung in the air, and she realized that there was something deeply wrong with the creation. Isabella, sensing Emily's presence, turned her enchanting gaze toward her. You, she purred, are not like the others. You are strong-willed, but I can change that. Isabella approached Emily with a seductive grace, but Emily's love for her brother was unwavering. She knew that Isabella's beauty was a facade, a deceptive illusion woven from Theodore's obsession. As Isabella extended her hand, Emily recoiled, brandishing a small, hidden amulet that Theodore had given her before his obsession took hold. The amulet emitted a faint, protective glow, and Isabella hissed in pain, her enchanting facade faltering. Emily, with determination in her eyes, chanted an incantation passed down through generations of their family, a spell that could break the hold of Isabella's enchantment. Isabella screamed in agony as the spell took effect, her form contorting and shifting back into lifeless clay. Emily, with tears in her eyes, spoke to her brother's creation. Theodore, I release you from your obsession. The sculpture of Isabella crumbled into a pile of clay, and the curse that had plagued the town began to lift. The townsfolk slowly regained their strength and clarity, their lives returning to normal. Theodore's sacrifice had not been in vain. Emily, mourning the loss of her brother, was determined to carry on his legacy. She transformed the studio into a place of healing and creativity, helping those who had been ensnared by Isabella's curse find solace through her art. But as the years passed, a faint whisper echoed through the studio, a voice that sounded like Theodore's. It was a soft, bittersweet melody that seemed to come from the very walls. Theodore's love and obsession, bound to his art, lived on in echoes of the past, a reminder of the fine line between passion and madness, creation and destruction. And as the sun set over the studio, Theodore's legacy endured, a testament to the power of art and the darkness that can consume even the most gifted of souls. Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed the story. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.